these experiences have allowed him to discover and hone his leadership talents and to complete the DTM journey six times. Impressive. Professionally, he is a chartered accountant at J.P. Kapoor and Oberai, a firm he joined in 1980 as a trainee. He was made a partner in just six years in 1986. He specializes in international cross-border taxation. In his keynote speech today, he intends to speak through anecdotes and examples about our purpose as Toastmasters and what motivates us to do what we do as members and leaders. Before we commence, I would like to, of course, acknowledge Ari Farzana, who's there, and I believe Ari Ali is also joining, so we are very grateful for them. And furthermore, Ari James and Ari Sunil, the incoming Ari's have said that they're going to be joining in a minute. But we're going to start now. And now we have the honor of having DTM Menon talk about why we do what we do. Sir, please go ahead. Thank you. Uh... District Director Samir Dodi for that wonderful introduction. Uh, indeed, it's an honor, it's a pleasure to be speaking to District or Territorial Council 122. I'm sure that this won't remain a Territorial Council for very long. Uh, the way this Territorial Council is doing, the way you're progressing. And I'm, I'm very impressed and very proud of all the achievements that uh, you have made as members and leaders of this Territorial Council. Uh, indeed, you became Smedley's Distinguished very early on in the year. And that's uh, fantastic, very admirable. And congratulations on, on those achievements indeed. As I look back at this year, this year which started off uh, on 1st of July for you, but it started off in August for me, as I became the international president, I remember thinking that this year would be a year where we would not really see any change, where we would not experience uh, the turmoil that we've had in the past few years, where there would be stabil stability that we will introduce during uh, the year for our members and leaders. But of course, all of that changed uh, when the pandemic struck us in uh, January, February of this year. And since then, we are living in a world of uncertainty. We're living in a world where uh, we don't know what's going to happen in the future. And we're tackling the days as they go by, taking a day at a time, because we don't really know uh, what is it that we can do. But at the same time, Toastmasters International took uh, steps to ensure the safety and welfare of all our members worldwide by allowing that exception to make sure that uh, all clubs were able to meet online instead of in person. And I think that has been quickly adopted by our members worldwide. And they have taken two online meetings like Fish to Water. That, in my opinion, has changed the way Toastmasters has been functioning for the last 96 years and has paved the way for a wonderful future ahead. In this time of the pandemic, it's been the leaders who have been the most challenged. Leaders like all of you, whether you're members of uh, clubs, leaders in clubs, or leaders in the district, because it's been your challenge to ensure that you continue to lead from the front, continue to lead with courage, make sure that you're looking after the needs and welfare of your members. And despite the obstacles, you have had to march ahead. You have had to showcase your ability to lead. And it is at such times that we start questioning the purpose. Why are we spending this much time and energy and effort in doing this voluntary activity? After all, we're all volunteers. Toastmasters does not pay us uh, big bucks. We get in appreciation or in remuneration only an applause. That's about it. So why is it that we spend so much time and effort and energy in leading, in spending time 
in learning and growing in this organization. This was a thought that had puzzled me and I'd often wondered, why is it we do what we do? Years ago, it was in 2011, I still remember I was uh, attending an international convention, 2011 August, uh, if I recall correctly, it was in Las Vegas. Uh, no, 2011 was, yes, it was in Las Vegas. And I was, uh, after the convention, I went to visit my niece who lives in Vancouver. And when I visited her, I was hoping for a wonderful time spending time with her and her family. What I did see was something that uh, uh, really um, put me to despair because I noticed that my niece had uh, developed a terrible stammer and uh, she was now a person who would refuse to leave home. She had lost all her confidence. Let me tell you a little bit about her background. She used to live in Hong Kong with her uh, family and uh, two daughters, her husband. And then after many years of living in Hong Kong, her husband decided that they would migrate to Vancouver no, 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 no. in Canada. And that shift from Hong Kong to Vancouver caused some challenge which destroyed her confidence. She was not able to adapt perhaps to the new environment that she had in Vancouver. And because of that lack of confidence, she developed the stammer. And because of the stammer, it caused her further to dip in the confidence levels that she had. And as a result, she lost all her chirpiness that she possessed. She lost all her energy. And as I said earlier, she refused to even leave her home. She would not answer the phone for the fear that she would stammer. That was the condition I saw Deepti in. My, my niece, her name is Deepti. Her daughters, the two daughters that she had continued to try and motivate their mother to leave home. Uh, her husband Rajiv tried to do his best to encourage her, to motivate her, to inspire her, but to no avail. I was there for about uh, three days uh, in Vancouver, living, uh, staying in that home of hers. And all that while, I kept talking to her, trying to push her forward, trying to encourage her, but again, nothing seemed to work. My words just did not seem to uh, fall into the right space uh, in Deepti's mind. I talked to her about Toastmasters as I would generally to anybody I meet. And uh, I told her about uh, the wonderful things that happen in Toastmasters. I told her about the support that we offer in Toastmasters. And of course, the fact that we learn to improve our communication and leadership skills. And, and I told her about my stories, about how I had changed, how my life had changed through Toastmasters. Again, she was hesitant about uh, thinking about Toastmasters as well. But I tried to persuade her to come with me to a Toastmasters meeting and, and see for herself what happens there and whether she would be willing to try it out. It was as if she was paying no heed whatsoever. But finally, I was able to persuade her to come attend a meeting in downtown Vancouver. But she made me make a promise to her that at that meeting, she would not be required to speak. Now I made that promise to her knowing I would not be able to keep that promise. After all, when we go to a Toastmasters meeting, we are expected to speak. Short enough, we arrived at the meeting, very professionally conducted meeting. It was uh, like any Toastmasters club, full of very supportive people. Uh, it was a family, very warm, very welcoming. As we all sat down before the meeting started, uh, there were people who came across, talked to us. And then and when the meeting began, the president of the club, started by asking guests to introduce themselves. And when it came the turn for Deepti, hesitantly she stood up and said her name was Deepti. And saying that, she sat down. 
and perhaps she thought that was it she wouldn't have to speak anymore during this meeting and then came table topics and deepti was called to speak on table topics now deepti looked at me and if looks could kill i would be not here today speaking with you it was uh, with a lot of anger that she stood up and walked towards the table topics master i could see that pouring out of her but at the same time i could see the nervousness that she had as well she approached the lectern and when the table topics master gave her the topic that she had to speak on hesitantly with the stammer she spoke she spoke well she had good thoughts about the topic that was given to her and she spoke for about a minute and a half and then came back and sat down but she did not make eye contact with me i knew she was extremely annoyed with me nor did i but i just held her hand um gave her a little more comfort at that time knowing that she was not prepared to uh, talk to me at all meeting came to an end and when the best speakers were announced that day deepthi was announced as the best table topic speaker you should have been there to see the smile on her face that evening the support that she felt the warmth that she felt from that club made her join that club and when she joined that club she again made me make a promise to her she said that i would support her in her journey that i would be her mentor even though remotely from new delhi and that uh, i would uh, help her practice every single speech of hers and that when she completed that first ten speech projects in the traditional uh, communication uh, manual i would be there back in vancouver to witness that speech i made those promises knowing that i would keep them and sure enough a year later i was back in vancouver for that tenth speech from the competent communication manual that dikti was presenting at her club and what i witnessed was a miracle deepthi had almost lost her stammer she had regained her old confidence she had engaged with the club she had become really a part of that fraternity she was uh, considered as a valuable member and as a leader in the club she had taken on officer roles and that speech was extremely impressive that was a story of transformation of deepthi she went on to also get a great job in vancouver as a school teacher and today she is considered one of the best school teachers in her school last year she had the occasion to speak to an audience of 800 students teachers and parents and she called me and said you know i'm i'm having a problem i don't know how i can address 800 people and i told her look you're a toastmaster you can do anything where we have superpowers <laughs> anyway she she wrote out her speech and uh, then she sent it to me she wanted to practice it and i heard it out and i encouraged her when she delivered the speech she had people laughing and crying and she moved her audience i was completely impressed by all that she had been able to do in this short time that she had regained herself her confidence and her energy through toastmasters friends i discovered why we do what we do through deepthi and through many others like deepthi we find that there are many people whose lives we touch whether directly or indirectly their lives change for the better every person who joins toastmasters spends time in toastmasters has the opportunity of making their lives better if that purpose is clear to us if we know 
why we do what we do and continue to provide that leadership to our members, encourage more people to join when we know that they need what Toastmasters offers. And we see the difference it makes in them. We can change the world one person at a time. If we have the clarity of purpose, we can have the conviction that we can do things. I'd like to refer to you to a book by an author named Daniel Pink. The book is titled Drive. And Daniel Pink talks about what motivates us, what motivates us as humans. When we have uh, a roof over our heads, we have enough to feed ourselves. Then beyond that, what is it that motivates us? And there are three things that uh, Daniel Pink says motivates us. It's purpose, it's mastery, and it's autonomy. If we are able to discover what is our true purpose in Toastmasters, outside Toastmasters, then clearly we have a name in life. We have the conviction of purpose behind us. And we are able to do anything that we want to do. So the purpose must be clear. We must have a clear vision of what is it that we would like to do? What is it that we would like to share? How is it that we would like to progress in our lives? That, that purpose becomes uh, overpowering for us and, and makes sure that we continue to be follow, following the path that we set for ourselves. If we take this path that we have set for ourselves, the purpose that we've set for ourselves and follow it with autonomy, because that's the other motivating factor that we have, uh, according to Daniel Pink, autonomy. The ability to do things on our own, rather than being directed to do the things that are required to be done. In Toastmasters, we practice a lot of autonomy. We have the ability to do the things we want to do in the way we want to do them. Of course, we're guided by our governing documents. We are guided by our bylaws, uh, our policies and protocol, but within the four walls of the governing documents, we're able, we're free to do anything that we want to. It is for us to make our program more creative, the way we want to ensure that we engage our members, make sure that we're able to offer the highest quality to our members. So we have the autonomy to run our program the way we want to. Of course, knowing that we have to have prepared speeches, we need to have table topics, and we need to have evaluations in our meeting. But then if there's a variety of other things that you can add in your club meetings. So we have the autonomy as well in Toastmasters. And if you have autonomy in anything that you do, you will be motivated to perform well. And that takes you to the third element of motivation, which is mastery. If we are motivated or if we want to be motivated, we must want to master what we are doing, what we are learning to do. And in Toastmasters, one of our core values is excellence. We aim to do everything with excellence and excellence is equivalent to achieving mastery. So if we ensure that we do everything in a masterful way, that we move towards excellence, that we practice autonomy and we have a clear purpose. We will be motivated to do what we need to do, whether it's in Toastmasters or outside Toastmasters. But I add a fourth element to this and that's passion. If we have passion for what we are doing, what we believe in, then we will be successful because that passion rules us, rules our life. Passion for Toastmasters is what brings us together, cross geographies, cross races, communities, genders. It doesn't matter who we are as individuals, because when we come together, we're coming together with a common purpose, with that common goal of enhancing who we are, of making sure that we improve our skills, our communication and leadership skills, learn life lessons, through Toastmasters that no school, college, or university teaches us. In this time of the pandemic, in times of the 
um, challenges that are in front of us, we must make sure that uh, we deal with the situation with some competencies. As leaders, as members, we need to possess certain competencies. And those competencies are really five C's. What are those five C's? I talked about a little bit about courage. We must have the courage. And courage comes with confidence. Those masters teaches us how to be confident, how to be confident in everything that we do. And with confidence comes courage, courage to face any challenge, any obstacle that is faced by us. In the early days when the pandemic hit us, there was confusion. But over time, because of your courage, you were able to face the situation head on and meet the challenges and still be successful at the end of the year despite the challenging year. And that indeed is a demonstration of the courage that you have. In this time, we need to be compassionate. Compassionate because we're not in this alone. Everybody is going through this together. Whether we are here in Pakistan or in India or in the United States or elsewhere in the world, no part of the world has remained unaffected, untouched by the challenges that this pandemic has brought us. So if we have compassion, if we practice compassion, whether now or in the times of the new normal that should emerge in time to come, we will be great leaders. That fact that we are able to be empathetic, practice active listening, will make sure that we understand the feelings and the emotions of our fellow human beings, of our members, and make sure that we make a, a space for them and make sure that we meet their needs. That's what they joined Toastmasters for. In this time of uh, the pandemic, in this time, the other competency that we need is clarity. Clarity of vision, clarity of purpose, and of course, we need clarity of communication. We need to be very clear about what that vision is that we have um, for ourselves and for our members. If our vision is clear and we are able to communicate it well, we will have people who will want to help us, help us achieve the objectives that we want to achieve, our goals that we have in front of us. Clarity of purpose, I've talked about already the purpose that we must have. So if we have the clarity of what our purpose is, we can certainly be better as leaders, more equipped as leaders. We need to ensure that we have conviction. I talked about conviction as well a little while ago, about conviction that irrespective of whatever happens, we can circumvent, we can go ahead and challenge whatever comes in front of us. Because with that conviction, we can be resilient, we can res be resurgent and do the things that we have to do. Because conviction requires us to be the, the best that we possibly can. And finally, we need to remain calm. Calm and composed. Do not let anything make you feel confused. Do not let anything feel, make you feel challenged. If you remain calm in the sea of turmoil, you will be the leaders that everybody wants to emulate. Practice the five C's that I talked about. Have courage, be compassionate, have clarity in your vision, in your purpose, in your communication. Ensure that you have, you remain calm, and composed and have conviction in everything that you do. And you can be fantastic leaders. Have a clear motivation. Be motivated through the purpose, through mastery and autonomy. And when you are able to understand what moves you, what you're passionate about, your purpose also will be clear. And you will then understand why we do what we do. Mr. District Director.
thank you very much, President Menon, for the brilliant talk. Really appreciate it. And we'll now move on to the question and answer session. However, before that, I would like to acknowledge the presence of RA Ali, who has been like a mother hen to us throughout the year, helping us throughout, and the incoming RA, RA James, who has kindly joined us. The question and answer session will be conducted by PQDZ Kalia DTM. Uh, he, like yourself, is a chartered accountant. And I always used to think the accountants are very shy people, but by gosh, I find I found that I'm wrong. I think they're the best people <laughs> in the world. <laughs> and now I would <laughs> and I'll request uh, DTMZ to please take over and conduct the question and answer session. DTMZ. Thank you, District Director uh, Samir Ahmed Dodi. And thank you for acknowledging chartered accountants. We have a lot of chartered accountants in Pakistan who are Toastmasters. And it's our honor that we are part of this community. As I was saying to someone that I love two organizations, one is Toastmaster and another is Chartered Accountant Institutes. So let's start question and answer session. Uh, first question is, uh, uh, have you ever failed? Have you ever embraced failure in your life? And how you bounce back from the failure? Thank you, uh, Zaid, for that wonderful question. Indeed, uh, failure uh, is a motivating factor. Either failure can overwhelm us and uh, we uh, can be depressed and go into uh, depression uh, or despair. But at the same time, failure can be a lesson that we can use to never commit errors again or the same errors that uh, cause the failure again. I was a division governor of uh, District 82 in the first year of its uh, formation as a provisional district way back in 2000, 2006, 2006, 2007. And in that year, we really had absolutely no knowledge of how to run a district. We were quite at sea. We didn't have region advisors, uh, the mother hens that Samir just mentioned to guide us. Uh, we were in fact, not even aligned to a region. We were all districts not aligned to regions. And uh, we really had to do things ourselves. So in that time, in that year, um, the leaders really didn't give much direction because they didn't know much themselves. And as a division governor, I did what I felt was right. I just wanted to ensure that I spread awareness of Toastmasters in my division. My division incidentally um, con uh, constituted uh, three quarters of India, uh, which was all of North, East and West of India. And so it included cities like Delhi, Mumbai, Kolkata, Hyderabad, Pune, Chandigarh, Jaipur, you name the big metropolitan cities other than Bangalore and uh, Chennai, all of the other cities were in my division. And each city had perhaps one club or half a club and I was uh, running around Helter Skelter trying to just uh, set up uh, clubs or, or um, bring awareness of Toastmasters in those cities. At the end of the year, we certainly added new members, we certainly added new clubs, but we missed out on some minimum parameters of success that Toastmasters measured for uh, recognizing districts as presidents distinguished, select distinguished or distinguished. We were required to have certain number of competent communicators and advanced communicators in the district for making it to a minimum of distinguished criteria. And there was a score sheet that was maintained taking into account these minimum criteria, including uh, growth in membership payments and growth in uh, net clubs. Uh, and we did not meet the minimum advanced communicator criteria in the district that year. If we had got the minimum and we missed it by four advanced communicators, if we got that minimum criteria, we had achieved it, we would have been a select distinguished district that year. But because we missed that mark, we were not distinguished at all. And I remember in 2010, August, when I was at the international convention, 
eight, no, it, this was in 2007 at the International Convention. I was the Lieutenant Governor of Marketing that year, 2007 in Phoenix City. I was at the Hall of Fame, seeing all districts coming up, receiving their recognition for uh, achieving distinguished or higher status. And we were sitting back, feeling sorry for ourselves that we had missed the mark. And, and that failure really hit me. And I knew that we would never ever have to face that failure again. And we set up our, our goals. We knew what we needed to do. We looked back at that failure and saw what was it that challenged us. And we made sure that we worked on everything that we needed to do early on in the year. And we set goals for ourselves, not for one year, but for many succeeding years that we would never ever fail. That's how we bounced back from the failure that we'd experienced that year. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, I, I must say that it is a guidance for people who embrace failure and come out of uh, failure, bouncing back and then regaining their confidence. The next question is very important. You talked about the purpose. So how to find out uh, a purpose? It's a very basic question, but people struggle in finding out their own purpose. Absolutely. I often say the purpose of life is to live a life of purpose. In my opinion, the, the purpose, your purpose is something that is, that is internal to you. You have to uh, open the doors of opportunity. Opportunity keeps knocking at our door. We sometimes are afraid of venturing out of our comfort zone. We must be willing to experiment. This happened to me. I think I was just too engrossed in my professional activities as a chartered accountant. Uh, as you heard in my introduction, I'm, I'm a practicing accountant and uh, my life was just a profession. And uh, I hit this mid, mid life crisis when I discovered I was, I was uh, only gaining uh, horizontally and uh, my bank balance was growing. But I really was not, I was not gaining anything in life. I, it seemed my life was purposeless. And that was when I discovered Toastmasters. And I discovered the power of Toastmasters. And I discovered the difference it makes in the lives of people. And ever since, that became my purpose. That became the purpose that I saw for myself. To touch the lives of as many people that I, I could and help them through Toastmasters to change their lives. You need to discover your purpose yourself. You will find your purpose. And that purpose will come to you when you're willing to experiment. I did not want to join Toastmasters. I was a very reluctant uh, member. I remember in the sense a reluctant guest, I would say. I did not want to go to that first meeting that I did. But when I went to that first meeting, I joined immediately. So uh, if, if you give that opportunity a chance, you don't know what's on the other side of the door for waiting for you. Okay, so in your opinion, uh, is title important in Toastmasters to create an impact on people around you or we can have impact on people without any title in Toastmasters? you can have uh, impact any way that you want to, whether with a title or without a title. Titles are only a way in which you can ensure that you can participate in creating strategies, in creating initiatives, which perhaps you may not be able to do if, you're not, if you do not possess a title, because then you may not be able to persuade your leaders to do things that you want done. There are times when we question the strategies that our leaders have. We question what they are doing and how they are doing it. But we don't want to take this next step, which is to take on leadership roles ourselves so that we can influence change that we want to see. So there are times when you have to take that step of leadership, of taking a role only to see the change that you would like to see. But even without titles, you can still ensure that you can influence change. You can be the role models for others to follow, to make sure that uh, they do the best that they possibly can because you're showing them the way. 
Okay. So two question, I'm clubbing them uh, up. Uh, one is, what is the most critical leadership trait uh, for a leader? And uh, what keeps you going in the Toastmaster journey as you have reached to the highest level of leadership? I would say there are uh, three things which are important, not just one, to have as a leader. One, uh, ensure that uh, we keep the core values in mind. Uh, the core values of Toastmasters uh, are written there on the screen above my head, which is integrity, respect, service, and excellence. If we have those core values in mind in everything that we do, we can be great leaders because then those decisions really guide us in taking the right decisions. Those, those core values guide us in taking the right decisions. Uh, the second uh, thing that is very important, very critical for a leader to have is compassion. Compassion for people, uh, empathy for our members, understanding the needs of our members. If, we have, if the leader has compassion, then they will do the right things for our members. And the third thing is to be collaborative, is uh, to ensure that we practice uh, consensus making. We make sure that we work together as a team. We're not dictators as leaders, but we build consensus. So three things, core values, consensus, and uh, compassion. That was great. Um... And next question is, uh, there are many uh, motivational speakers in Toastmasters community and they are guiding and few of them are uh, guiding our members that you need to have only one speech to become dist distinguished Toastmaster. You have to tailor that only one speech to different aspects of uh, pro project objective and you can become distinguished Toastmaster. So what's your view on this uh, advice? I'd say to each their own. Uh, if uh, you feel that one speech is all that you need to do uh, in, for every single project that you have in Toastmasters or in your Pathways uh, program, then so be it. Uh, I, of course, differ. I would certainly not just take one speech and keep delivering that over and over again because I'm sure that I would not meet the objectives of each of the projects with just that one speech. I may be able to meet the objectives of maybe a couple of projects, but not all of them. And so I would, be, uh, I would not be doing justice either to myself or to the program if I would just take that one speech and start with that icebreaker and then continue with that same speech until the end, until the time I become a distinguished Toastmaster. That's really not the purpose for which I would have joined Toastmasters. Again, this is a voluntary organization. We join Toastmasters not to become distinguished Toastmasters. We join it to gain skills, skills through the program, through going through the various paths in Toastmasters, the levels that we have, those five levels in each path, because everything that we go through, and it's not just in these speeches that we do, but in the variety of things that we experience in our club meetings. That's what helps us achieve what we, what we have to in Toastmasters. We learn by doing. And therefore, if, uh, if you really want to get the best benefit, you will not just take that one speech and, and continue doing it all the time. Very well said. Um, within corporate community, I, uh, you have worked with the corporate clients and in, there are many corporate corporates uh, who don't like Toastmaster activities to be carried out in their offices because they consider it as, a, it as a waste of time and they want their employees to be focused on their core jobs. So how we can convince those corporates and their HR function to embrace Toastmaster activities in their corporate environment? Thank you very much. When this question is posed to me, usually I... I pose the question back. What is the most important resource in a business? People. Absolutely. People, right? People, 
you can have money but if you uh, if you don't have people you can't run a business you need people what if your people have technical skills but do not have communication skills do not have leadership skills would they be effective no. what if you offered a training program which is for let's say 3 days or 2 days concentrated 2 days training in soft skills development perhaps communication training how long is the impact of that training going to last and how much is that training going to cost and then if you tell them about the learning by doing that those masters offers about the cost that those masters in uh, uh, is uh, involves about how the cost of attending a club meeting is uh, equivalent to having a cup of coffee the cost of a cup of coffee once a week they understand how valuable those masters is and they understand how cost effective it is so you've got to talk to people to the corporate leaders in the language they understand you've got to make them understand about the profitability that their organization can have by ensuring that their members go through those masters gain the skills and thus add to the bottom line of the organization yeah then they will understand that this is, has an roi and they will understand then they will embrace uh, that those master activities uh, absolutely next question is very important about stemmers who are being held by those master to overcome their uh, difficulties so this is the question of inclusivity and exclusivity few, few people say that there should be a exclusive club for stemmers and few people say that there should be an inclusive environment so uh, what's your take on this i i talked about my niece who had a terrible stammer um, when she joined those masters but it's that uh, supportive environment that we offer in that club uh, in our those masters clubs that helps bring about confidence in people and helps change their lives and i do not think that we need to have uh, just exclusive clubs only for people who are who stammer i think they should be uh, brought in and be part they should participate in clubs with others who do not have that stammer so that they feel included as part of this community of uh, supported people uh, we of course as i very uh, early on in my talk mentioned we uh, are working across uh, people with different challenges or communities or religions or race it doesn't really matter we must be willing to embrace everybody so the point is well taken that inclusivity is very important so that we all are united and we are stronger together so uh, due to pandemic there's a benefit of uh, connecting with people across the globe and we we are honored to have you today but there's a downside in online meeting that we cannot uh, have uh, that much energy which we have used to have in face to face meeting so how to bring that level of energy in online meeting i can speak for myself that i feel as energetic uh, when i'm speaking on this to a screen uh, in front of a camera as i do when i'm speaking in front of uh, people in person physically uh, standing on the stage and speaking the energy comes from you from within you have to ensure that when you speak you speak with passion you speak from your heart and when you speak from your heart when you speak with passion you will feel energetic because that's what makes us feel uh, that passionate feeling makes us energetic makes the blood flow and i i think that um, this opportunity that we've now had of being able to speak online has opened the world for us has uh, ensured that we are able to attend meetings uh, in different parts of the world in uh, identifying the um, ways in which other clubs meet in getting to know underst understand the best practices that others have and incorporate all of that into our meetings 
In fact, I predict as we move to the new normal after the pandemic has ceased, uh, I'm sure there will be very many people who would still want to continue meeting online, even though there will be plenty who will go back to meeting in person. Okay. Thank you very much for guiding us on this topic. And next question is very difficult because it's about difficult people. In every organization, there are difficult people. Some of them say toxic people. So they say our way or highway. So they say that we know Toastmasters rules better than you. And they, in fact, damage the brand of Toastmasters. So how to uh, challenge them, how to address this issue? Because it's everywhere in the world. Thank you. This goes to, um, to conflict resolution. So really what you're talking about is these difficult people cause conflict. And to understand how to uh, perhaps resolve conflict, what you need to do is to understand the root cause of the problem. What is really uh, in the minds of these people, these difficult people that you're talking about? Uh, what is it that's causing them to be difficult? And uh, the fact is that if, if, we, if we respond with emotion, we will get into a wrangle. But if we, if we respond with facts, if we first understand what are the facts that are being provided by the, this individual, and we respond with facts, but not with emotion, we can diffuse the tension, the conflict, and make sure that things can be smoothened out. Because uh, if, if we battle with emotion, we will never get anywhere. So understanding, have compassion, remain calm, don't react, but only look at facts. Nice advice. And uh, uh, moving back to your uh, reply regarding online clubs. So now the situation has changed and we are moving to new normal. So will... Uh, online only clubs will be allowed to become part of district in future? I can't say. I, right now, we do not have that in uh, our governing documents. Online clubs are not part of a district as of today. Uh, the board of directors may take a look at that as we go into the future and as there is perhaps more demand for this. Uh, I, I cannot say what the future holds for, uh, for online clubs at this point in time. Uh, presently, the exception that was allowed uh, for all clubs to continue meet online uh, is still in place uh, until it is uh, rescinded, which will probably be in uh, some time. I cannot, I cannot even predict when that exception will be removed because right now, many countries across the world are continuing to face the challenges of the pandemic. Even the United States, where uh, it was felt that uh, there was uh, perhaps um, the, the COVID-19 uh, numbers coming down, has started seeing a resurgence of the numbers. So clearly, the world is not yet ready to come back and meet in person. Though there are parts of the world where we have started seeing in-person meetings, China, Hong Kong, parts of Europe, uh, have gone back to having meetings in person. So two last questions, and these will be quick. One on pathways. In fact, two for uh, pathways. A uh, few people say that level one and two are same uh, in every path. So now mm -hmm. members who are accelerating and they are giving their speeches frequently facing the challenge to repeat the icebreaker, repeat the research the topic, so is there any way out to uh, overcome this situation? And second one, as an auditor, we feel that uh, there are few controls need to build because they are clicking and you can be complete your project. So is T T Toastmasters considering to in uh, embrace or in incorporate any controls or uh, pathways so that people can uh, have proper check and balance? Thank you. I'll answer the second question first. And I think the best control that we have is our conscience. And it goes to integrity. The fact is that we, we joining, as I very early on said, we're joining Toastmasters 
to gain for ourselves, right? I, I don't join Toastmasters for somebody else to gain. I join Toastmasters for my own benefit to grow, the, to obtain the skills that I want from Toastmasters. I don't join Toastmasters to sh show a plaque saying distinguished Toastmaster to people at large. If I, if I cannot demonstrate that I'm a distinguished Toastmaster through my actions, through my leadership, through my communication, will people believe me? Will people value me? No, not at all, because it's just a piece of paper. It's just a piece of wood. So it, it goes to integrity and it goes to the conscience of the people. Our controls are the vice president education and the secretary of the club. They are the ones who are the base camp managers and they are the ones who practice the controls. And when they click the button, we believe them. So uh, it, it's, it's for us to ensure that we do everything with integrity. As far as your first question is concerned, Samir mentioned I did my uh, DTM six times. He also, he has not mentioned the fact that I have done my competent communication manual, perhaps about 18 or 19 times. Each time I had to do my icebreaker speech again. I had to do all the 10 speeches once again. And each time I did them differently. Each time I developed more skills than I did it the first time or the second time or the third time. This, this in fact gives you an opportunity of experimenting, of learning new ways to do it of improving. The first time you do an icebreaker, you cannot do it the second time exactly the same way. You will do it as a more improved speaker, as a more improved communicator. And when you do it the third time, you will be even better. This uh, goes back to that uh, earlier point about, you know, using this, this one speech and going through the entire program. Here we have uh, a different speeches that we can deliver for the same objective and improve and be better than we were the last time. Okay, so now we are running out of time and I really enjoyed talking with you and I hope everyone has enjoyed. We have a lot of questions. We have to skip those questions. And uh, one last question, if someone wants to be, get connected with you on social media or through email and also learn from you, is there any opportunity to, for that? Well, I'm on Facebook, I'm on LinkedIn. And um, you can always reach me on my email address, which is interpresident at toastmasters.org. I-N-T-E-R, president at toastmasters.org. Thank you very much. And our time is now end. So I would request district, uh, this, uh, our district director, DTM Samir Hamid, to take the charge. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you very much, GTM Z. Thank you for that wonderful, wonderful session. And thank you for the answers because they were informative. And I think everybody has learned something from your answers. Now for the vote of thanks, I would request DTM uh, Zanair to please come forward. He's the division director this year and he's the incoming district director. Uh, DTM Zanair. Please, the word of thanks. Thank you, DDM Samir. Well, I would like to thank uh, the international president, Deepak Menon, and to welcome him back to Pakistan. And why I say welcome back? Because for those of uh, you who don't know, last year in March, we had uh, an event here in Pakistan, which was basically, uh, I was going to deliver my DDM speech and my club made a big event out of it. It was called the Toastmasters Summit and we had 13 clubs attending it and it was a live webcast uh, on Facebook and we had people from Karachi uh, attending that event and participating in it. And in that event, we had a message, a video message from the then president to be Deepak Menon. And it was a you know inspirational message. You know, half of it or a small part of it was about congratulating me for completing my DTM, but the major part of it was about the prospects that Pakistan has. And this was the time when we were all going and uh, you know trying our best to become a territorial council. And DTM uh, Menon not only uh, gave us hope, you know, he also uh, told us to how should we go about it. 
for example, he told us that we need to go out and tell people about it. And that is something that we are currently doing. And clearly, uh, his advice has really helped us in the way this year has gone. In spite of all the difficult times and you know, the lockdown and COVID-19 situation, we did well. We, we, are, we are doing great. And uh, you know, talking about the three points that uh, Deepak, uh, DDM, uh, Deepak Menon talked about, purpose, mastery, and autonomy. We do have a purpose now. The purpose to become a full-fledged district, the purpose to make the make an impact in the lives of our members, our Toastmasters, and uh, to make an international impact for the country as well, to have our name there as a district and as a place where people are really committed about their own personal uh, well-being, about their personal and professional development, and about making some impact in the lives of the others. And uh, with this uh, idea in mind, and with all, and you know, thanking for all the wonderful word, words that uh, the current president, international president, Deepak Menon, has shared with us, we really hope that he would be here this time in flesh. Unfortunately, due to the current situation, we could not. But we have still lost, not lost hope, <laughs> and uh, we really hope that uh became Deepak, you will be some uh, you know here in pakistan in lahore karachi sambal and all the major cities sometime really soon when this situation gets over and we would love to welcome you back hopefully within the ne- within the next year and i'm really hopeful that uh, you know we can get you here for our international conference or some other event uh, where we will get to learn more from you and to share a cup of coffee with you so with this uh, in mind and thank you for your time and your wonderful words Uh, Deepak Menon, uh, you are an inspiration for all of us and uh, keep shining, keep doing the amazing work and uh, we all learn from you and we hope to get to the place uh, that you currently hold sometime really soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I would like to now finish off with just a small, a minute of your time. Uh, I mentioned a few days ago, in fact, you were there. That a higher uh, that Lee Ayoka said that a higher smart people and I get out of the way. Now this year we were smedley distinguished. In fact, we were the first to be smedley di- distinguished. But the point is that who did it? It was the team. I couldn't hire anyone, and as you said, I had no money. But I got the best volunteers who put in the heart and soul into this effort. We faced tremendous challenges. We were new. We really didn't know what we were doing. I must say, Ari Ali was an angel who kept on pushing us, helping us. Wonderful man, wonderful, wonderful person. Ari Farzana also really motivated us and helped us. And I know that Ari James, who's coming in with Ari Sunil, will do a wonderful, fantastic job. But we had that. We were new. Another point was we didn't have any finances till two, February 2020, not because of Toastmasters, but because of the State Bank of Pakistan and the regulations. And then third of all, the COVID-19 in March. But in spite of that, we made it possible. And it wasn't me. It was my team who made it possible. All effort and everything goes to them. I was there, but I think that they are the ones who did the wonderful the job but even more than that it was the members who made it possible they did the projects they paid the dues and this is what i always say that on top we have the members then the executive committee district leader and the district director comes at the bottom i tell everyone that i am a servant of those masters we are servant leaders and if we have that purpose in our head that we are there to serve the members I think that those masters will grow in Pakistan. I know that there will be a district there very shortly. In fact, I can predict that within eight years there will be a minimum of two districts in Pakistan, because there's so much of enthusiasm, so much of passion, and you, I hope that at that time when there are two districts, we'll invite you and I'll tell you, see. I told you, sir. <laughs> I hope that that will, that day is going to come very soon. and uh, as i said that i really and truly appreciate you, the fact that you took your time i know that as the international president you have your you know you, you have commitments all over the world but yet you made time for us we are the babies and you are 
well i wouldn't see a daddy but i must say that you're the first <laughs> i must say that you're the one you know who's really inspiring us and making it possible with the rest of the toastmasters team are ali are farzana are james the whole staff at toastmasters international they are wonderful people i don't know how they managed to find the time for us but they are the ones who really are making this wonderful and 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 one last thing i truly believe at the core of my heart that toastmasters is a force of fantastic good it is a source of greatness in the world and we absolutely need it we need the leadership we need the integrity we need the passion we need confident people and that's how we will grow so once again thank you sir for your time thank you you have really made our day at least my day and my year by being here today thank you thank you thank you so much amir i must tell you that um, looking at uh, what pakistan is uh, going through right now as a territorial council well uh, this was something similar to what we experienced in india in 2005 because we were a territorial council ourselves and in 2006 when we became a district i had predicted that we'd be 10 districts in 10 years time well it did not turn into 10 districts in 10 years time but uh, today there are 6 uh, districts and there are three new districts which are coming in by 2022 so there'll be nine districts in 2022 and if we include pakistan that makes it 10 districts in the subcontinent uh, and that's a fantastic achievement to have from a time in 2006 when there was no district in the subcontinent so uh, i think uh, toastmasters international may well have to shift its world headquarters to the subcontinent sometime if we continue growing in the way we do and, and samir i believe that uh, you have the potential to have not two but more districts in eight years time and and also let me tell you there is another pakistan connection that i have uh, my mother was born in multan so um, so so in a sense i am half a pakistani <laughs> thank you again for your encouragement i now for the without further ado i think we've reached a time limit uh, we'll all say goodbye and perhaps do master can you please allow everybody to turn on their videos and perhaps we can have one photo before uh, we shut down as a memento Zoom master, please allow everyone to turn on their videos. So please turn on your videos, so we can have a nice group photo along with our international president. Please turn on your photos, uh, on your videos. Thank you. Okay. So I think everybody has more or less start done this. Yes. Okay. Fantastic. So Zoom master, can you please start taking the photos now? Everybody smile. Let me do no when we are done. Zoom master, are we done? Give me just half a minute. Okay. Okay, we're done. All right. So, sir, thank you again for your time. And now we can all leave. Goodbye. Thank and you thank and you. goodbye, everybody. Thank you. Goodbye. goodbye. Take care. All the very best, everybody. Thank you, sir. Right. Thank you very much. Goodbye.